guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So today's video is going to be my everyday makeup drawer for the month of May. If you guys are new to these videos, thank you so much for watching, but it's basically just where I go through and I show you all of the products that I'm going to be trying out or using during the month. I like to switch up my makeup every single month so I can try new products and just rotate through my collection so I'm not using the same products over and over because I definitely have a tendency to do that. So I'll put timestamps in the description box below if you guys want to jump ahead. First, I'm going to talk about the products that I included in last month's drawer and just go over the things that I'm decluttering or taking out of my drawer. So if you want to skip this part, definitely check the description box below and I will put timestamps. Okay, so let me start with the products I'm actually decluttering from my makeup collection. So the only one that I finished up is the Kat Von D liner at the very top. I used that up and I did repurchase it. So it's definitely a good product. So everything else I'm decluttering. The two bronzers on the right, the Laura Geller bronzer and the e.l.f. bronzer are too dark and too shimmery for me. So I just really won't get use out of them. I'm disappointed because I really like both of those products. I own other shades in those collections, but those two in particular did not work for me. I am decluttering the Makeup Forever primer. It's a little bit out of focus, but there's nothing really wrong with the primer. I just have other primers that I like better. And I do not believe Makeup Forever is cruelty free. So even if I did like it, I wouldn't repurchase it. So I'm just going to go ahead and declutter it. The Wet n Wild Fergie primer, I actually think is expired because it was irritating my eyelids. I've had it for a while. I tried to use it up last year and I didn't finish it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and toss that. And then I tried out these two products this month and they just didn't really work for me. The Physicians Formula Concealer creased so badly under my eyes. I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming video. And the Smashbox Highlighter Stick just wasn't for me. I'm not usually like a cream highlighter blush bronzer fan, so I just thought I would pass that along to somebody else. And then I am decluttering my Anastasia Contour Kit, which I know a lot of people like this, but I've tried other contour kits that I like so much better. And I just, I reached for it this month and I really didn't like how it applied compared to my other one. So I'm going to pass that one along to somebody else as well. Okay, so moving on to products that I'm just taking out of my everyday makeup drawer. All of these are products that I love and I will definitely continue to use. I'm just going to put them back into my makeup collection and switch them out for something different. So starting with the setting powders on the bottom, I love the Cover FX setting powder so much, but I've really been into pressed powders lately. And then the Laura Geller powder isn't really what I'm looking for right now. I have other powders that I love and that I'm trying out this month. So I just want to switch those two out. I really like the MAC highlight and soft and gentle, but again, I'm just trying other highlighters out this month. And then I'm not completely sold on Benefit's Hula Light. I don't know if I love it, but it's also not really the look that I'm going for right now. It is a very matte bronzer. And I'm really into my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, so I'm just going to try it out again in a month or two and see if I like it then. And then I do really like Max Fix Plus, but I feel like it's a little bit too dewy for me for the spring and summer, so I'm going to hang on to it and use it at a later time. So these are three palettes that I really like. I've been using them a lot lately and they're kind of similar in color as you guys can tell. I've been gravitating toward like a certain look. I'm going to try to switch it up a little bit this month so I'm just going to put them back into my makeup collection. So on the top I have the Tardis Pro which is one of my favorites of all time. I definitely recommend it. And then on the right I have the e.l.f. Matte for Matte too. I'm going to do a get ready with me using this palette coming next week. On the bottom I have the Makeup Revolution Neutrals versus Neutrals palette and again that is one of my favorites. So I'm definitely going to hang on to them. I'm just going to put them back into my makeup collection and try something different. So again, these are products that are going back into my makeup collection. I love the Becca primer. It's one of my favorites, but I feel like I'll more so focus on using that during the colder months because it does give you a pretty dewy, luminous finish. And my skin is definitely luminous enough during the warmer months, so I'm just going to put that back into my collection. I love the Maybelline foundation and Maybelline concealer, but I'm just going to use something else this month. So those are going back into my collection as well. And then of course the Tarte Shape Tape is one of my favorites, but I've just been into more so of a lighter concealer look lately, so I'm just going to switch it out. And then on the right is the Maybelline Eye Primer. I do like that product, but I have another eye primer that I'm trying to use up this year. So all of those will definitely be products that I will still use. They're just going to go back into my collection. These want to roll away, so I'm just going to hold them into place. These are the lip products that I'm taking out of my drawer. So I have Kat Von D, ColourPop, Wet n Wild, Urban Decay, and Bare Minerals. I'll put an overlay on the screen with their names. These are all products that I definitely love, but my my lip product drawer is getting so full because I haven't really been using a lot of the products, so I just need to take a few out of the drawer this month. Okay guys, so I am doing a voiceover. I normally just talk through the products as I show them on the screen, but my audio got messed up, so just bear with me. I don't know if the words that I'm saying are always going to match up with what I'm showing on the screen, but I will do my best. So I am first using the Urban Decay All Nighter. Of course, this is my favorite go-to foundation of the moment. I think it might be a little bit heavy during the summertime because I like to let my skin breathe a little bit, but we'll see. I'll try it out this month and see
see how I like it during the warmer weather. I also have my Hourglass Vanish Seamless Stick Foundation, which again, it's kind of similar. This one is really hydrating, so I think this might be the last month that I use it until fall and winter roll around again, but I'm almost finished with it and I am trying to use it up this year, so we'll see. Then I have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This one has been my favorite drugstore foundation of the moment. It feels really lightweight on the skin, but it gives you pretty good coverage. So I have a feeling this is going to be one of my go-tos during the month of May. And then I have my Pure Cosmetics Bare It All Foundation. I did do a full review on this, so I will link it in the description box below if you guys wanna check it out. But this is a really good full coverage option. I'm really into full coverage foundations, but I think during the summer, I might let my skin breathe a little bit more like I was saying. So I did have to include my It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better. CC Plus. I love this product so much, especially during the warm weather. I wear the shade Fair, but I also wear the shade Light if I get a little bit of a tan. I love this because it is just really moisturizing, really hydrating, which is kind of the opposite of what I normally go for, but it gives you pretty good coverage and it feels so lightweight on the skin. So if you like to let your skin breathe a little bit, this is a great option. It has SPF 50, which is really important to me because I do spend a lot of time out in the sun, especially during the spring and summertime. So if I want to do a quick makeup routine, I will definitely reach for this product. I don't always do like an everyday makeup routine. I'll usually reach for a full coverage foundation. But again, when it's warm out, I usually like to do something really quick and simple because I just want to spend as much time outside as possible without having to worry about doing a full face of makeup. So I am adding in two foundations. Both of these are not cruelty free, but they are in my collection. So I'm trying to finish them up before they expire. I have the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous, which I think I usually reach for during the summertime. It's pretty lightweight, but again, it gives you pretty good coverage. So I'll see if I can finish it up this summer. And then I do have the L'Oreal Pro Matte Foundation. <laughs> well, I don't know why I just struggled with that. But this one, again, very lightweight, but it gives you a really mattified appearance. So I'm going to try to use both of those up. So moving on to face powders, I have Benefits Hella Flawless, which is not cruelty free, but I have loved it so much. I'm, I'm trying to finish it up in 2017, so I really focused on using it. And as I've been doing that, I've discovered it's like my favorite powder foundation in the entire world. I usually use it to set my liquid foundation, but I use it with a wet beauty blender. I think that I found a good alternative for it, which I'll talk about in a second. This shade's a little bit too yellow for me anyway, so once I'm done with it, I won't repurchase it. I also have the It Cosmetics, what is the name of this? Celebration Foundation in the shade Light. I do not like this product. Honestly, I would return it, but I feel like I used a good amount of it already, and I don't like to return products if I can, like if I can make them work, you know what I mean? So I feel like I can make it work. I'll usually pair it with the It Cosmetics CC Plus Cream because this one is very mattifying, which kind of sounds like something I would like, but I just don't like the texture and the coverage. I thought that it was going to be full coverage because I watched a video of somebody using it and it's not that good. I tried using it with a wet beauty blender and it left like that permanent mark on it. So don't do that. That doesn't work with this powder for some reason, but I usually just go in with like a foundation brush and I'll use it to set my foundation. It doesn't make my skin look flawless. It just has like a dry finish to it, which might be ideal if you have very oily skin. But even though I have oily skin, it's just not my favorite. So I won't repurchase it, but I am trying to use it up. I also have this e.l.f. HD powder. I believe this is the lightest shade that they offer. It's kind of nice. Again, I use it with a wet beauty blender or a damp beauty blender to set my foundation and it gives you really light coverage. So if you are a light coverage powder kind of person, this might be a great option for you. It dries a little bit darker than it looks in the pan, like a lot darker, which is the only thing. So. I would maybe go like a shade or two down because it kind of oxidizes, which is weird for a powder. I haven't had that experience before. So the powder foundation that I think that I found to replace the Benefit one is from Kat Von D. It's her Locket Powder Foundation. I wear the shade Light 42, which matches me really well right now. I should have gone a shade or two darker though because I think I will get a little bit of sun during the month of May. We're going to be at the beach and we're going to be in Florida. So I don't know how long it will match me. I'll just repurchase it in a different shade. But I really like the texture. It's very similar to Benefit it's hella flawless, but it's slightly more mattifying, so it's actually perfect for me, and it stays in place all day long. I actually haven't tried it on its own yet, so I'm going to try it on its own this month, but as for now, I love setting my foundation with it. It gives me a really beautiful full coverage look, and I just, I really like it so far. Okay, so moving on to primers. I didn't add any additional primers into my collection this month because I had quite a few in here. I'm still trying to get a feel for a few of them, and then I have a few of my go-tos. So the first one is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This is my favorite primer in the entire world. Hourglass was so kind and they sent me a full size because they saw me talk about it on my channel and I had a deluxe size sample. So thank you to Hourglass. That was honestly so, so nice of you. I just can't be without this primer. It is so good. 
I'm trying to use up the Cover FX SPF 30 protection primer this year, and I like this one because of course it does give you that added sun protection, but I'm trying to finish it up. I think it's good because it kind of smooths over any wrinkles, fills any pores, and makes your foundation go on really nicely. It does have a strong SPF scent, but I'm probably about three fourths of the way finished with this. Then I have the NYX Angel Veil Primer, which has been one of my favorites. I talked about it in my May favorites, so I will link that below if you guys want more info, but it's a good everyday primer. It's very lightweight so it feels great on the skin. And then I have my Smashbox primer. This one is their pore minimizing primer. And I just started trying this one out toward the end of the month. I love it so far. It really mattifies my skin. And if you have very oily skin, this is going to be a great option for you. Then I have the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. I've only used this a few times, so I have to keep trying it out so I can form a complete opinion on it so far. It's good. I just, I really haven't given it a very good shot. So I need to keep trying it out before I guys, before I give you guys my full opinion. And then I have my Tarte Poreless Primer, which I am trying to finish up in 2017 as well. So those are all of my primers. Let's move into the rest of the face products. So I have been using my Physicians Formula Bronze Booster Matte Sculpting Trio. This is like one of my favorite contouring products ever. So I am going to be using it this month. I discovered it last month, but I don't think I talked about it yet in one of these videos. And then the only other bronzer that I have in my collection is the Physicians formula butter bronzer. This one is just my go-to and I feel like whenever I try to use another bronzer I always end up going back to this one so this is the only one that I'm going to be using this month. As for blushes I have the Too Faced Papadome Peach Blush which is just a good everyday coral pink and then I have two of the Physicians Formula Butter Blushes. So the lighter one is in the shade Natural Glow. It's just a really beautiful very light subtle pink and then the other one is in the shade Plum Rose which is more of a dusty mauve. It's great for everyday wear. Of course I have my favorite blush of all time. It's Benefit it's dandelion, which I am disappointed. I already hit pan on because it's not cruelty free, so I won't be able to repurchase it. But in the meantime, it is one of my go-tos. And I do have a couple of Becca Cosmetics blushes. The first one is in the shade Damselfly, which is a really beautiful warm peach. And the second one is in the shade Gypsy, which is a very light, cool-toned pink with a little bit of very subtle gold shimmer. It's really unique and beautiful on the face. I have been using the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12-hour blush in the shade Exposed. I'm trying to finish it up this year, and I am adding in the blush blush in the shade Tipsy, which is a very beautiful, vibrant, bright coral. It's so pretty. I cannot wait to wear it. I think it will look really beautiful with very subtle makeup and maybe just mascara and really pretty like coral cheeks. I cannot wait to try it out. So moving on to highlighters, I have the Essence Highlighter in the shade Pure Nude, which is one of my favorites. Then I have the Makeup Revolution Highlighter in the shade Radiant Lights. I personally haven't tried this one very much, so I definitely need to give it more of a shot this month and see if I really like it. I really like the color. Then I have the Balms Mary Luminizer. I apologize because my light was a little bit bright here, so it kind of washes the next few products out. And then I have the Wet n Wild highlighters in the shade Precious Petals, which is the lighter shade, and then Crown of My Canopy, which is the darker shade. These two have been some of my favorites. The formula is just so good. So over to the right, I just have the ColourPop highlighter in the shade Might Be, and their blush in the shade Between the Sheets, and then a blush that I got in an Ipsy bag, and my Smashbox Contour Trio. I did hit pan on the contouring shade and then I almost hit pan on the highlight shade so I love this product so much and then I am adding in the elf HD highlighting powder in the shade starlight glow it's a really beautiful yellowy gold again my light washed it out a little bit so I apologize you can't see the true color but I'm really excited to wear these the formula reminds me a lot of the balms Mary luminizer I'm also adding in two of my Laura Geller Baked Gelato Swirl Illuminators. On the left, we have the shade Charming Pink, and on the right, we have Peach Glow. These are really beautiful as highlighters or even as blushes if you prefer a really shimmery look. I have been trying out the Smashbox Casey Holm collaboration. She created two different highlighting palettes with Smashbox, and Smashbox is one of my favorite brands, and Casey is one of my favorite YouTubers, but I have to say I'm not completely impressed by these yet. I am going to feature them in my Sephora haul coming up soon, so I'll share more of my thoughts in that video, but I need to try them out more so I can decide if I do think they're worth the money once I get a chance to really play around with them. So I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, so moving on to lip products. Things haven't changed too much. I've had a lot of the same products in my drawer. So I have the Too Faced Sweet Peach Lip Glosses, which are my favorite currently for springtime. They're just really easy to wear. They smell so good and they have some really fun, bright colors. I have the Bite Beauty Lip Gloss in the shade Rambutan, which do you guys know if these lip glosses were discontinued? I cannot find them anywhere. I'm so disappointed because I love that one 
one so much. I have the NYX Lingerie Lipstick, some ColourPop Liquid Lipsticks, and the Too Faced Liquid Lipstick in the shade Child Star. So these are just kind of some of my go-to products of the moment. I am adding in the Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit Lipstick in the shade Nudie Patootie. Actually, I think it was in my drawer last month, but I never actually tried it. So I need to make sure I actually try it out this month. And then I have the Sephora Collection Lip stick in the shade 32. Okay, so I am adding in a few of the ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lips in the metallic finishes. They have a bunch of different finishes, and then they also have ultra metallic lips. They're not the same product, but they do have ultra glossy lips with a really beautiful metallic sheen. So I definitely prefer those over their ultra metallic lips. I hope that's not too confusing, just because they're very beautiful. So the first one's in the shade KT. The second one is in the shade Wolfie, which is a pretty raspberry with some gold shimmer. The third one is in the shade My jam. This is one of my favorites because it's a really beautiful bronzy shade. It looks so gorgeous. And then my personal favorite out of all of them is Tight Fit. I feel like it's so wearable because it's a nude lip gloss, but it looks so shiny and beautiful once you apply it. And then the last one is in the shade Cheat Code. This one is a gorgeous bronze. If you want a little bit more of a bold statement lip, this might be a good option for you. So I can't wait to actually wear them on the lips. The formula is so good and I love that they have that metallic sheen. I am adding in two of the Smashbox Always on liquid lipsticks. The top one is in the shade Baja Bound, and the bottom one is in the shade Dream Huge. I have really been into pink lately, which is totally not my typical style, so there are a lot of pink products in my drawer, and I cannot wait to wear them. Okay, moving on to eye products. So I have my It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara, Essence Lash Princess, and Maybelline Lash Sensational. The only other mascara that I tried last month that I added in was the It Cosmetics Hello Lashes Mascara, and this one is actually really good good. I think it makes your lashes so long, so if length is your main concern, definitely grab this one. I actually like to pair it with the It Cosmetics Superhero because that one makes your lashes very thick, so paired together, they're like the perfect combination. In the very back, I have my e.l.f. liquid liner, and then on top of my vanity, I have my Kat Von D liner. So the only eye primer that I'm using this month is from Lorac. It is their behind-the-scenes eye primer. I just had this in my collection, and I find that it doesn't irritate my eyes, and it does a pretty good job, so I thought I would try to use it up this year. I am using the Benefit Fit Cosmetics Gimme Brow. I love this product so much because it gives your brow such a full appearance because it has fibers in it and I haven't been able to find something that's as good as it. I know Essence makes something similar but I just don't like it as much so I just have a sample size that I'm using up and once it's gone I can't repurchase it. And then I have the Anastasia Brow Powder in the shade Dark Brown. I actually asked my sister what she uses on her brows because her brows always look so good and this is what she uses. And then I went into my collection and I actually had it which is crazy. So I have been using it I've been loving it. Before this, I was using a Maybelline powder, but I've been looking for a replacement, so I really like this one in the meantime. So none of my ColourPop shadows have changed. I'm just adding in one shadow in the shade Fantasy, which is a very bright, vibrant purple, and it just looks like a lot of fun for the month of May. And then I have the two e.l.f. liquid shadows. The top one is in Molten Bronze, and the bottom one is Brushed Copper. I like these, but they do tend to crease on me, so I thought I would give them one less shot before I decided to declutter them. So moving on to eyeshadow palettes, I just have a few in here. I have the ColourPop eyeshadow palette this one is from their sand collection and it just has some good everyday shades in it. Then I have the Tarte Lit and Bloom palette, which is a really beautiful mix of mattes and metallics, and it's just perfect for everyday wear. I have some of my ColourPop pressed powder shadows. I put them into MAC palettes, but these are just my favorite single shadows. They're really affordable, and they have some gorgeous colors, so these are my go-to of the moment. Then I have my Too Faced Sweet Peach palette because that is just my favorite palette ever, at least of 2017. I haven't been able to stop wearing it, so I have that one in my drawer as well. I have the Becca Cosmetics Sun Chaser palette, which comes with a bronzer, blush, and highlighter and I haven't used it a whole lot. I just recently added it to my collection so I want to get more use out of it. And then I have the ColourPop Blush and Highlight Duo. I think this one again is from their sand collection so I really like the formula. I've been using it a lot lately. This one is the Milani eyeshadow palette in the shade Earthy Elements. I got this fairly recently and I just wanted to keep using it because it has some really beautiful warm shades in it. And then I have the e.l.f. palette. This one is a brow shadow and liner palette and has some really beautiful cool toned neutrals. So I thought I would give it a shot this month. And then the last palette is the Lorac Unzipped. I rediscovered it while I was decluttering my eyeshadow collection and I thought the colors were just beautiful. I haven't really worn it since the fall time so I wanted to break it back out and use it even more this month. So that is the end of my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a long one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you let me know in the comments below which products you are using this month and let me know if you've discovered any old favorites or any new favorites that you think I need to try. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.